Full tilt. One dollar, nine man turbo. Check out the full tilt skin. How sick is this? So, no set, no bet is pretty standard, but this is the just 30 chips, so whatever, let's just call it 30. Uh, now it's uh, not very good. We've got a Razor. <laughs> the odds of turning a 4 um, are 8%, and the pot odds we're getting at the moment are 12%, but we're not closing the action, so I think it's a fold. You're just tr playing to hit a 4. So I would fold the, to the race. You're not getting good enough odds to hit just a 4. And that's your only out, really. I feel like I, I get punished for slow rolling. So if I'm losing a lot of all-ins where I slow roll. Well, don't slow roll then, Yoda. What are you doing, bro? It's bad karma. Don't you know that you always call for splits? And never slow roll. And never, like, talk shit about people. And you'll win all the all-ins. That's the secret. Save to hard drive rather than export. Ah, okay. Yeah, that'll work. No antis. Oh man, it's killing me. Full tilt, where are your antis? So with no antis, you have to play much tighter. Uh, stealing in the early stages until you get to the antis. Um, eight is pretty good. Like, you can argue to just get it in here because it's 30 big blinds and it's blind versus blind. But I think in a $1 game, it's a little bit too risky. Like, you don't need to be getting it in with eights this early. I just call. See a flop. That's a really good board. So if he bet you were planning on calling, after he checks, I think you can still bet for value against flush draws and like a five and a three. So I bet. Well done. Good sizing. I think he means slow play, not roll. <laughs> if he means slow play, well, that's just bad luck. But slow, slow rolling is when you like purposely time down with like aces and then call to make the guy feel bad. But slow rolling, I mean slow playing is just like, can be a good way of playing. You know, like playing slow with big hands. Full tilt doesn't have antis ever, like even high blinds. Oh, that's gross. That's really going to affect the entire way you play. It's going to affect how often you can steal. It's going to affect your your push ranges. I haven't played with no antis in four and a half years, so this will be interesting. Like your push range with antis. And without antis, differs by like 15%. It's it's a huge difference. The antis, especially late stage, make a big deal to your ICM ranges. So like 10 big blinds with antis, like cutoff, probably is a 20% range. Oh, sorry, with, with uh, without antis would be a 20% range. I'm just guessing. I haven't done this in a long time. But um, with antis, you can probably push like 30. So yeah, it's a huge difference the antis make to ranges. How many percentage of players do you think use HUDs or micros? I have no idea. I don't play micros cash, so I don't really know. Sitting goes up to five dollar buy-in. How many players use HUDs percentage? I'd say it's like. I mean, I think it's less than that. In micros, most people are recreational players, and recreational players don't use hugs. So, I think it's like less than 5% in micros. As soon as you get to like $15 games, it's probably like 80%. Vanvalok. I never slow roll, but sometimes I check if I really have the hand. I think I have, so it might take more time. Yeah, Alright, here's a, here's a story time. I was playing live poker, and I was pretty new to live poker, but I've played like maybe a few tournaments, and I was I was deep in a tournament, it was like a 1k buy-in or something, and I was playing a multi-way pot, and I was, like the board was um, paired, and I had like a junk hand, and I misread my hand, and I was practicing in live poker, like not looking at my hand a lot, because you can give off tells if you're always like looking at your hands. So I was practicing like just looking at it once and then not looking at it. Um, so I looked at it pre-flop and then we played the flop and I like 
I checked and like I got nothing and then I I got to the turn and I just took a peek because I had a, a, just a bad feeling I took a peek and I'm like holy fuck I have a full house so <laughs> I ended up like I was almost folding but just before I folded I was like I checked my hand I'm like Wow, I actually almost folded a full house without even realizing that I had it. You know, like the Phil Ivy thing that he did on uh, the World Series where he mucked when he had a flush and he didn't realize? That was almost me. Anyway, I ended up like winning the hand because, you know, full house is a good hand, but yeah, funny story. Tell this story in an English accent. Tell it shoot on head or pre-recorded, right? In cash games, NLT on high mess your bad hunts. You probably know better than me, but I'm like I don't play those games. Check checks hand and smiles. <laughs> Face palm online players, exactly. That's a Dutch void emote, that's pretty cool. I like that emote. Try not to smile, yeah. Oh man, when I think back to how I played live, this is like three years ago when I first played live poker, I was so bad. So bad. I actually made money too, because I got pretty lucky. But, yeah, it was so terrible. It's probably still a winning strategy because the games were that bad. Like, they were that easy, but I, I, played it so terribly. I was just being too tight, I was, um, yeah, I, my main league playing live was just playing too tight. I was folding the big blind too much, I was not raising enough, not stealing enough, and just not playing enough pots, and I won most of my money by just getting good hands and, like, getting into coolers, but it's not how I play live anymore. Biggest tell is guys who smack the flop in face and then just freeze wide eyes staring trying to give up a tell. Yeah, I don't know very much about live tells, so I couldn't really tell you guys about that. I'm the, in in live poker, I literally just look at my hand and then stare at the same spot the entire the entire time. I don't try and get reads off anyone because I feel like if I was to try and to get reads off someone else, they would read me more than I could read them. So I'm the guy just like looking down, trying to stay calm with my bluffs and with my nuts. Just look the same all the time. I want like Scott Siever. I really love how Scott Siever plays live. He's really... He's a great player and he's very talkative and... I don't know if you guys have seen many Scott Siever YouTube videos, but he completely owns people with the way that he talks. Um, and what he, what he says. Maybe I'll YouTube it. Oh, I won't do it on stream, but if you guys want to see some sick live, like, mind games, look up Scott Siever on YouTube. Just check out some of his hands. There are anties? Huh, well, I guess we'll find out. Boss looking down at his nuts. Okay, this is a, not a good play, Marion. When you have 12 big blinds, you never want to be limping. It's just too much of your stack to invest, especially with a weak hand like King Five. It's not connected at all. It's just a pretty bad hand. If you were to want, if you, I know this guy is short, but it's still not a good hand to go all in against five big blinds. So you should just be folding this on the bubble. I like the call. You have a small pair. It's only 100 chips. Now you have two pair, I think you can raise. I'd raise 300. Good. Good raise. Alright. You, you chop it up. But pre-flop is just a fold. This is a fold. Good. That's a fold. Good. Fold. Great fold. With antis, this is actually very close. But without antis, it's a very easy fold. Nice little trap with aces. I think if you're going to trap, just min-raise. Make it 3x. People know that you're not folding when you make it that big. Second biggest was a guy who used to bounce his feet under the table thinking I could not see them and he did not realize his shoulders were bouncing too. <laughs> Siva is insane at like live poker. How he um, 
mind games people so well. Like, Negroni is also really good, but I just like Siva's style better than Negroni's. I also think Scott Siva is a really, really good player. Murray? Murray? What? Murray? What the fuck? Oh, it's Murray? It's got an N on the end. Murray. Murray. Murray? Murray. Murray. We'll go for Murray. Murray N. Murray. Did we have a IP made event mentioning that guy's fake gulping and falling? I got owned. I haven't seen that and I want to look that we'll look at that now. Can you do hand in hold the resources if needed so I can watch if I do the right things and not learning the wrong way? Alright, half fashion, I can do that. We'll try and find a push the next push fold spot we'll do it. Moo Ryan. Moo Ryan. Ryan. I'm sorry, I'm terrible at English. I don't have. I never said I had a crush on Siva. What are you talking about? Um. All right. Let's do this hand in a calculator. I believe it's a fold, but we want to do it. Hold on. Resources calculation for half fashion. So let's do this one. I haven't done a full tilt one in a while, so this should be interesting. Uh, full tilt, let's find the hand history. We've got seven of clubs, king of diamonds. So this is how I do it, right? So for single hands, I get the hand history and just go control F for find, then up, because you're at the bottom of the hand history. Seven of clubs, king of diamonds. Literally type it in and it'll find the hand instantly. Okay, there it is. And you, in Hold On Resources, when you open it, um, just do basic hand. You can import them from your hand history files as well. So you can import here and it'll go to your hand history folder and import all the games and then it'll load up all the f all the hands and show you like which are good and which are bad but we're just doing one single hand history so we'll do it this way you press um paste from clipboard because we, we copied it we go to the payouts so it's nine man um 50 30 20. no antis right so this is where you can change it you can just put normal ICM and like you want to do FGS normally unless um, it, it's take it might take a long time if it's like a, a, a nine-handed with a lot of different scenarios like if there's a lot of people I think this FGS calculation might take a while so if it's taking too long just do ICM and FGS what it does is it will calculate also adjust your range for the future hands so in hold on resources you can set it to adjust for like one extra hand the, the next hand or the, the two after that and it'll also do like weighted averages of the next possible scenarios and give you a better idea of what we should be doing now based on how your stacks will change in the future so this is something that like four years ago when i when i was starting out they didn't have fgs no one like thought about this but people realize that if you're under the gun, next hand, this 200 chips makes a big deal. It makes a big difference to your equity. So people started realizing that they should be pushing more because next hand you're, you're going to be hitting the blinds. And these taking this 300 chips hurts your stack a lot. And the developers of Hold On Resources and Sit and Go Wizard mathematically I mean you can mathematically do future game it's it's something that I've done a video on it's actually in my poker strategy link so you can look in this link uh, not that link sorry this link here where the videos are there's a free future game simulation video that I did about four years ago which is 
I believe the second video ever to be released on Future Game Simulation. Um, it was based off the guy that did it first. And you'll, you can see the math. It's The math is fairly easy um, on Future Game. But doing it with calculators these days is much easier than how I had to do it. I had to do it manually back then. Back then, when I was doing Future Game before anyone else, I'm going to brag about this because... Hell, I'm going to brag. It's, it's deserved a brag. I was doing it in an uh, Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to review that video one day on stream too. I had an Excel spreadsheet with Future Game calculations, which would adjust the EV... Um, because of the, the next hand hitting the blinds, but you, I couldn't do it for two hands because the calculations were too in, just too in depth, too many variables, but Holland Resources will. Okay, I went on a side tangent there, but yeah, if you want to know about Future Game, click on that link and uh, check out my FGS video. Uh, yo, yes, the prizes. If it's two, three tables, you put 100. Yep, for Chip EV push, you just change first to 100 and make these 0, 0. That's Chip EV. That's what you do. Alright, so we'll try FGS. I'm not sure if there's too many variables for this, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And we'll leave that as Nash. Uh, maybe I can do the optimize if it works. I actually don't know the difference between these two. I never really changed it. Alright, let's see how long it takes. It's taken way too long, so... Um, let's... Cancel that shit and try it again with different settings. Like, this is going to happen when it's... Um, seven-handed and there's a lot of variables, sometimes the FGS takes a long time. So we might try doing it like this, see if that makes a difference. No, it still takes too long. So I, I'll, what I'll have to do is just do it in normal ICM and then adjust intuitively and make our range a little bit looser because next hand we're reading the blinds. Yeah, unfortunately, like FGS in seven-handed tables, it just takes a long a lot of computing power to calculate all the different variables, possible variables that can happen in like three hands. I can't ensure stack we have minus 50 big blinds per 100, so I took close edges like 6 to 10 big blinds, shove stacks, and lower than 6 to 20, you can count some of my CV hands. The way I did it, SRB, SAVIC 1, you can actually calculate the dollar EV difference. Um, like, the way I did it back then is exactly the same as how these calculators do it. You can calculate dollar EV difference of hitting the big blind next hand and adjusting your current range to dollar EV differences, not just big blind differences. Yeah. But that sounds like a pretty good way of doing it. Is full tilt loud in US? No. Alright, let's try again. So I had to just do ICM. Much faster, there we go. You guys can't see it. Calculating away. So here's under the gun. So with... Six big blinds, no antis. No antis makes a big, di big difference to this range. Like, if this is on stars... The range would be much looser because of the antis. But with no antis under the gun, the this is the unadjusted range. Can you guys see? Yeah. It's um 17.4%. Basically like ace 10, any pair, suited aces, suited broadways, and high offsuit broadways. I'd say that's fairly tight for six big blinds. Um, because it's, it, this isn't calculating future game. And that's against these very tight core ranges. Look at these core ranges. Right, so, everyone's calling only 8s and ace jack. Unless they're the big blind, who's calling ace, 8 suited and like 5s and king queen suited. Um, 
but like this guy, he's got three big blinds. He's, there's no way he's folding like ace nine. So you have to adjust your ra your opponent's ranges. And what you do is you, I'm gonna choose the short stack, right click, click on edit range. And then you just, you can click on these uh, hands to add them in. So let's add a few more hands cause he's short, just a few. And you click okay. And uh, what will you click back on your hand and I mean, it should adjust these numbers. Now, it won't make a big difference because we only added like three combos to one guy. But if you're doing, if you change his range, um, well, let's just say we change big blind range from 10% to like 20. You see a little um, lock. That means that the, the range has changed. You go back to your range and all of a sudden the hands that earlier were green are now black and they're, they're minus EV. You see minus 20 now, minus 0.13, minus 0.29. So that's how you, um, what happens when you adjust the ranges. So the default here was ace 10, suited aces, suited broadways, any pairs and like king jack. I think with future game, you can push a bit more than that. Um, probably push like a 10-9 suited and like offsuit broadways like king 10. I probably would be pushing jack 10 off as well. And definitely pushing like ace 8, ace 7. With no antis, just such a huge deal to not have antis. It's not free, no. There's a trial. Which, uh, the link to it is down below in the description. There is a free ICM program down below called the ICM Trainer, but it's it's very basic and you won't be able to adjust the ranges, but it's good for new players starting out. Yeah, it is awesome, our fashion. Just play around with it, man. That's how I learnt Sid and Goes. I was playing with that program for hours and just practicing and, and learning things. It's, it's really good. Yeah, so I like the fold with King7. I think on stars, you can probably push that though, with the antis. Oh, this is so ugly. Um, I think you have to fold for a number of reasons. Again, no antis. Also, your kicker is quite bad. If you fold, you still have good fold equity. Well, I mean, it's not good, but it's okay fold equity, equity with more than uh, four big blinds. But... If you call and lose, like you just really, you got no fold equity with two big blinds. And you, like you might be slightly ahead of this guy. I actually don't know whether this is gonna be a good spot. I think that it's a fold, but we'll do the calculation. We'll do another one. So that was, four diamonds, ace of diamonds. Go. Do this one as well. I think it's a fold. I think it's like a seven suited, but I could be wrong. So we'll paste. We can't do future game again because there's too many variables. <laughs> yeah, put it in all the resources. Yeah, there we go. You think it's a shove? All right, let's see. Might be. Oh wow. Uh, Defaults. Ooh, ooh, it's close. It's close. Okay, default. It's really close. It's really close. So, default. The it has this player pushing 31%, and we are calling Ace Five suited. It break even against that range. Um. And like these are the overcalls. So you click on the the tree down here, the decision tree, and you can see. The red is you calling him, and then these are the overcalls. So this is like when he shoves, you shove, and big blind calls. That's this big blind call range there. So that's how you do the decision trees. Sometimes you have to adjust this as well. On like on the bubble, it might be very relevant what the big blind overcalls. But in this situation, it's not that relevant because the, the ranges are tight and you're not near the bubble. Um, so the question is, does he push more than this? I actually think he might, yeah. He might play more, he might shove more than this. So it looks like the suited ace is probably gonna be a good all-in. It just depends on the player. If he's a tight player, maybe you can argue to fold because you don't really wanna take a break-even call. But if he's, 
I guess, standard loose ish play. It's probably pushing 50%. And against 50%, yeah, like any suited ace is going to be plus EV. Ace 5 suited is plus 0.5, which is a really, really good call. So it looks like I was a little bit wrong. Well, it's actually a lot wrong. Plus 0.5 is really good. So you should be calling here with uh, probably 4s, King 10, Ace 5 off, any suited ace, King 8 suited, Queen 10 suited. Yeah he's so short. If he's a tight player, if he's a tight player, you can argue to fold. That's how you do that one. Close to the bubble now. Got to start thinking about that bubble ICM. Okay, so this is entirely dependent on the opponent. You can shop any two cards. If he's the type of player that um, that likes just seeing flops with weak hands, push or lean here with any two cards because there's 800 chips out there, and you're only risking like an extra 1650. So even if he does lip call you sometimes, you have decent odds with, with like two random cards, but most of the time he's just going to fold. And that picking up that, that 800 chips with only six big blinds left is a really big deal. But if he's a tight player, or he might be trapping, or you just don't think he's going to fold if you shove, then just check and see if flop. I was right. <laughs> Feels good, man. I was right sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right there, SRB. It's probably a, a, an all-in most of the time. Unless the guy's really tight, which is probably not the case. Who is next? Uh, next is... No, I've got someone else next who... Um, sent me a game earlier, but didn't send the hand history. And then I think we've got... Condor 1's games. Yeah, Condor 1 because he sent me games earlier. So I don't know if we'll get to SRB's 180 today. I'll try. I've got to go pretty quickly to get there. Yeah, so the correct thing to do here, push all in pre-flop any two cards if he's a weak player and he just likes seeing flops. If you think he's not folding or he's tight, just check. And with a pair, we're going broke. Well done. Any two cards. Just push all in. Um, you, Whenever you have less than 10 big blinds, blind versus blind, you just want to shovel in. You really don't want to make a small raise because there's a lot of chips out there. If he shoves all in, you're getting good odds and you don't want him to call and see a flop and hit a pair. You want to put maximum pressure on him and this min raise just isn't putting enough pressure on. So just push all in pre-flop, less than 10 big blinds. Very easy sit and go rule. Whenever you have less than 10 big blinds, it's all in or fold. Same thing here. Less than 10 big blinds, all in or fold. This is actually just a fold uh, from the button. Against two players, 9-3 is not really good enough. And same thing here. Less than 10 big blinds, all in or fold. This is the biggest lesson that you can get from this game, Marion, is whenever you have 10 big blinds or less, the only decision you make is do I push all in or do I fold? Limping is not an option. Min raising is not an option. They're both going to be much worse than going all in. So this hand, I would also just push all in. Put maximum, maximum pressure on your opponents. And, you know, if you get called, oh well, you might win anyway. Just go all in. He's only got 1,400 left. You have two pairs. That's good. So now you're on the bubble. You're in a very interesting spot. You know what? This is actually a spot where you can push any two cards. And I'm pretty sure about that. Um, so let's just look it up anyway, but I'm pretty sure this is any, any two cards push in, in the, the cutoff on the bubble. Because you've got the huge chip stack, and there's two guys that are fighting to try and make it in the money. So, I mean, I might be slightly less than any two because this guy is very short. But I think he's still going to be tight because this guy is blinding out first. He has less chips. 
Because this guy has 1,200. This guy has 1,000. Any two cards. Let's look it up. Seven of spades. Deuce of spades. Any two cards. Any two cards. Now this hand, you need to try and do a future game. Because next hand... Knowing what's happening is going to make a really big deal, really big difference. So the future game four-handed calculates mux much more quickly. Ooh yeah, Chris is right. ATC, take that SRV, take that. <laughs> ATC and Nash. So. This is cutoff range, which is extre actually extremely loose. Uh, I don't think that this guy, Batos, this guy, there's no way he is calling ace, ace 10 in this spot because the big blind is like committed. He thinks he's committed. So I think that the cutoff range is actually much tighter than that. It's probably like this. And I think that. Pascal is also going to be much tighter in fold 10s, so I think this range is also tighter. Might even fold jacks. And yeah, big blind, whatever, he's in the big blind. So, look at that edge. 3 deuce offsuit plus 0.35. That is insane. So, folding anything and you're making a big mistake. <laughs> I play 180s. Dude, for playing 180s, you know the 9-man ICM pretty well. This is a very intricate spot that even like mid-stakes regs will miss this. But any two cards here. You shove here, three deuce off, and you win 0.3% um, of the prize pool. So it's, it's enormous. Enormous plus EV push. Uh, just push preflop, you have jacks. Jacks, good hand. Uh, I mean, I kind of want this guy to double up because then we can abuse them even more. I think jack 8 is not really a good call hand, even though you're getting good odds. I don't think this is bad because you are getting odds. But, like... I'd prefer to just fold, I think. Let this guy handle it. Any two cards, just push. We Okay, so Marion, by far the biggest thing that you should take away from this review is whenever you have 10 big blinds or less, only go all in or fold. Don't limp, don't min raise. Everything else, man, you played it really well. Well done. Good, good to see. Uh, Alright, let's change it back to the old...